Hey, this is Chris from Record Talk, and I'm doing another episode of I Buy Old Records. So, Vinyl Finds and some CD Finds, Volume th Lucky Number 13. So, um, I spent a day, um, after the first of the month, I like to hit the uh, our local antique mall, flea market, Goodwill in my town, because not so much with Goodwill, I mean, stuff gets put out whenever, but obviously... Your boost might change out over months. So the biggest one's called Peddler's Mart. So I got Nil there. Um, the big vendor with tons and tons of boxes of shit records, where I did dig out those cool Greek folk records, but I've never gotten anything else worth a shit out of there. All those boxes was gone. All those boxes was gone. So that booth was cleared out. So it's like okay, so I don't have to look at those again. Okay, so I went to Trends and Treasures. This place always sucks. Um, so. Oh, wait, I, I turn around and I see a bunch of records in a booth that, where there's never been records before. So I'm excited, but oh, shit. The, the, sh the shitty records from the first place had just been moved to this place. It's exactly the same boxes. All right, but I did find some 99-cent CDs there. So we've got some Buffalo Tom, Big Red Letter Day. So this is some Boston Alternative from the Magic Year 1993. We got some Melissa, Melissa Farrick. This is a recent album from 2013. She um, was a kind of a Boston sort of uh, alt rocker on sort of the folkish Lilith Farish sort of side of things. Speaking of which, I found a Chantel Kraviasuk. She's Canadian. It's I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Um, and some Pete Yorn from the early 2000s. So I got all those for 99 cents each. I blame buying all that stuff on being a big Gen X wuss. Then I went to my Goodwill. This Goodwill never has vinyl. Good news. They have some vinyl today. They have a couple boxes of vinyl. Bad news. It's all Goodwill vinyl. Okay, so we get nothing there. Then we go to the Wagon, which is the smallest of our antique malls. It's the place I got the cool cheap jazz records last month. My 50 cent Austin Peterson trio with Milt Jackson, uh, that sort of thing. I did pick up a couple of 50 cent uh, CDs there. So we got uh, Fiona Apple title. I have this on vinyl. This is probably something I'll give to somebody at some point. And some Ani DeFranco uh, Dilate, which I think is from 1996. Um, and I blame College Music Journal for this, for putting Ani on my radar. Uh, Ani DeFranco probably has a record for being on the most of those College Music Journal monthly compilations that came out in the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, you could make a greatest hits comp just out of her appearances in CMJ. So then, uh, today, Saturday, as I'm filming this, um, I went around to some uh, surrounding towns at several antique mall antique malls flea markets thrift stores etc uh, some of these are places I've been a couple of them are places I haven't been a lot of places for strikeouts uh, we'll talk about the Kutawa drive-in flea market um, never been there before several small sheds as booths most of them were closed today during the rain. It seems like it's a pretty biker, MAGA sort of place. Seems like the sort of place you buy your Harley Davidson shirts and your Trump flags. Um, only a couple of booths were open. Lady told me that one of the there is a regular one of the regular vendors does have some records, but that person was one of the ones that wasn't there today. Uh, went to Grand Rivers, which is a bit of a little frou frou resort town. Um, so I like beds and breakfasts and condos on the lake. So I'm expecting stuff to be overpriced. So I go to their antique store that I hadn't been to before. There's just one crate of records there. The front of crate had some decent stuff in it, but was all badly overpriced. The back of the crate had the usual dollar bin shit, but for two or three dollars rather than a single dollar. So I didn't buy anything there. Uh, I went to Eddieville, a um, place called the Red Door Antiques. I found a bin of three, four, one dollar records. So I'm going through this bin. It's a complete crap fest. I'm figuring there's not a thing in here I would spend 33 cents for. The second to the last record is 22 explosive hits. 
I blame JJ. I never would have bought this otherwise. By the way, this is bought only for the cover. The record is in complete horrible shape that I will not be playing on my turntable. I decided I might as well just go ahead and get three records, spend the even dollar plus tax. We like polka music by Ted Maximowitz. Um, this is obscure enough where Ted does not have a Wikipedia entry. Discogs doesn't even know what year this album came out, and it didn't say what year. It looks like I'm guessing this would be sometime in the 1950s. It looks that sort of vintage. Um, so again, I got this for 33 cents. There's a copy of it selling on Discogs right now for $10.80. And the other one I picked up was, um, so the cover is in, there's a lot of seam splits and blah on this. Shades of Sal Salvador. I've never listened to him before. Um, I do know that he is a jazz guitar player, uh, I think sort of bebop, um, and I figure this has a non-zero chance of, of not sucking, unlike all the, uh, the, the talk like Max Stevens, the missionary position, white gospel, that was the majority of that bin, stuff I know I would hate. Um, this is on Bethlehem Records, sort of a cool 50-ish looking label. Um, and then I looked on Discogs, this came out in 1957, the cheapest one on Discogs is $22, I paid 33 cents plus tax, yes mine is rough, um, if I was going to sell it on Discogs I would obviously be going under the 22 due to condition, um, then I spent $2 on a CD there, so I found this uh, John Cougar self-titled there. I blame the record industry for not letting John Mellencamp use his real name early in his career. Um, there was actually quite a few uh, 45s there, singles, 7 inches. They were either thrashed or expensive, so I'm not paying a dollar for something I can't play. I'm not paying $10 just because it says Rolling Stones on it and has one Rolling Stones song on it. And then the other place I picked up some stuff today was uh, a place called The Shed in Paducah, where I got some cool 80s records probably like three months ago or so. I haven't been back there since. It's a large indoor flea market. Um, there are several record booths there that are obviously manned by people that are kind of doing this professionally or semi-professionally. So it's not going to be your usual dollar bins where it's like everything's a dollar or it's Beatles and Elvis will take on an extra zero to the price. So, they, I mean, these people know about Discogs. They've got sort of a eBay. They know they have, of course, sort of a clue of how to price their records. Uh, one place I did go by today where I, I didn't buy anything, Twin Lakes Antique Mall. When I was there three months ago, they had a bunch of expensive Beatles records with price tags that said things like $50 firm. Um, that same set box of all the exact same Beatles records was there. I don't think they've sold a single one in the three months. It's still $50 firm. Um, oh, and I, I've also observed, I saw tons of Dan Fogelberg records being sold today. So I guess if you're a boomer and you bought a lot of Dan Fogelberg records, your kids are selling them cheap to the flea market record booth guys when you die. They're not keeping them. So what did I get there? I got the Association Greatest Hits. Got it for $2.49. So this is something I've had sort of on my radar because uh, I like a lot of their songs. Um, but I had set myself, for this specific record, a hard $3 limit. This is very common to find, um, but you either find it where it's totally thrashed or you find it where it's quite a bit more than $3.00. And so I got one for $2.49. That's in good shape. So I got it. I blame Wendy. Iron Butterfly in Agata da Vida. Atco Records. Not the original pressing. Um, some mid-70s repress of this. Um, 
I blame drugs for buying this. Side two is uh, one song, by the way. Um, I found this 12-inch uh, this single, The Dream Academy, Life in a Northern Town Extended Version. Um, this is a European pressing. It's on this very flimsy uh, jacket, but it's got a Life in a Northern Town Extended, something called Test Tape Number 3, Life in a Northern Town 7-inch Mix, and a song called Poised on the Edge of Forever. Um, I always thought that was a cool song. I've never had anything by the Dream Academy. I figured a 12-inch single by them probably fits the bill. I blame MTV. The Rainmakers. So this is your cool mid-80s root rock. These guys were from Kansas City. Uh, I blame my local library from when I was in high school. I remember you could check out records. I checked out this record. I thought it was pretty cool. I taped it. At some point, I've lost that tape. This is something I've always had sort of on the back of my mind. If I found it and it was in decent shape, I would get it. And today was that day. So I got my Rainmakers again. And then finally, I found a booth with some decent 7-inch records. Now, one of the professional booths had 7-inch uh, records that the guy wanted like 10 bucks for. It was ridiculous. These were all $2 each. I bought seven of them. All seven of them have either the name Carl or Carl Boswell written on them. Damn you, Carl. So we've got um, Brass in Pocket by The Pretenders. Uh, flip side called Space Invader. So I like Chrissy Hines, so that seems pretty cool. Um, I got a couple of Queen singles. Uh, we, uh, and these are on pretty random sleeves because Queen was on Electra, not RCA. Crazy little thing called Love with Spread Your Wings on the flip side. It's off the game. And then we also have uh, another one, Bites the Dust, Carl Boswell. That's Carl Boswell's record. Well, not anymore. Um, and Don't Try Suicide. Okay, so I blame my mom because I had the game... And she must have done something with my copy of the game because when I retrieved records at some point, the game was gone. And then finally, I bought not one, not two, not three, but four Olivia Newton-John singles. So I went from having zero pieces of Olivia Newton-John vinyl um, to having four. Uh, they're all singles. So here's one without a sleeve. So we've got... Olivia Newton-John and the ELO doing Xanadu with uh, a song with her and Gene Kelly on the back. Yes, it's Carl's record. Um, also off of Xanadu, so this one does have the original picture sleeve. We have Olivia Newton-John Magic and a song called Fool Country on the back. Carl signed it on. The B side, thanks Carl. We've got uh, some Olivia Newton John. We've got physical. And oh, I got it upside down. You, you see, I haven't even cleaned it yet. It's it's pretty dusty, but I think it's gonna play fine once I undust it. Carl signed the A side this time, physical. Um, Something called the Promise the Dolphin songs on the B side. I've never heard that. I bet that's going to suck. Um, and then the last one. So we got some stuff off the Grease soundtrack. So we got You're the One That I Want. So that's Olivia with John Travolta. Uh, we've got Alone at a Drive in Movie on the flip side. Never heard that one before. Um, and so for me buying not one, not two, not three, but four Olivia Newton-John singles, I blame Juliana Hatfield because, um, I, in fact, I'm blaming her for that $8 plus tax. Oh, sorry. That $7.92 because these were $1.99, $7.92 plus tax that I'm never going to bid back because she made that damn cover record and got all us indie snob nerds to like Olivia Newton-John. So, oh. And then when I was checking out at um, the shed, um, 
So there was a funny black lady who was in front of me at the cashier, just doing the haggling at the antique mall. You're saying, but wait, everything is in different booths. It's got price tags in it. The cashier really shouldn't be able to haggle. Well, this lady was doing it anyway. This has been here since I've come to the place. I'll give you $5 for it. And then, like, the manager guy, he's like, um, um, um. And it occurs to him that she's obviously lowballing him. $10. And then she goes, I'll give you 7 And then he's like, oh, I, sh I need to get the line moving. He says, okay. So they sell her this whatever that was for $7. I should have had her bargaining for me. Um, so... Between, I ended up spending $38 at that place between my singles and all of my LPs. It wasn't dollar bin stuff, but it was, I thought it was, it was pretty, it was fair price, so not dollar bin. Um, there's a few booths there where the stuff is just a little bit too high. It's like just open up a record store if you want to charge record store prices and you actually get, be a full service record store. So I should have had her bargain my $38 down to $20 and give her $10 as a fee, and I still would have come out ahead. But no, we didn't do that. I just, I just paid, I, I paid the marked prices because um, I'm not Mr. Haggle. So, um, so that's some CDs. That's some vinyl I found this month. Uh, I might do one more trip this month at some point to go look for some stuff. Maybe it won't happen. Um, so. We'll, we'll see. Maybe I'll have a mystery box come in uh, through the mail as well. I, I like three or four of you watched the, the last mystery box video.